It is Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle today, of course, so a bit of perhaps a slight step up in difficulty from Monday and Tuesday. And it's been one of those mornings for me, just one of those mornings where I've had a, a tough time uh, sort of waking up and being uh, at, uh, operating at full capacity, I suppose. So we'll see how that little step up in difficulty does for me. Uh, to that end, this uh, uh, for the first time in months, I think, I am actually have a cup of coffee with me while I solve, which means I remembered to bring the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug to show you on camera. So this is what this is what you can acquire um, if you become a benefactor of the Patreon campaign. Anyway, speaking of speaking of benefactors of the Patreon campaign, actually, this um, caffeinated edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Casvius Echoes, Gabor, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. Uh, some of them, depending on how and when they became benefactors, will already have received the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. Some of them may be receiving it soon, and you could do so as well if you become a benefactor at patreon.com slash daily solve. Uh, but of course, if you back the campaign at any level, you still do get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So thank you so much to everybody who has become a backer at any time for any amount. I do very much appreciate it. It's what allows me to keep this channel going uh, as part of my daily work. So thank you so much. And um, do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, if you are minded to do so. And finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord, Discord chat community, the Discord chat server, which uh, can be also found in a link underneath the description. Um, of this video, and I, I happened to pop in there this morning, and I saw that Sfumato called this an easy Wednesday. So that's actually good. I'm glad to hear that because that's what my brain needs right now. I think is a relatively easy puzzle. There was that was then followed by a raft of spoiled comments, which I of course did not read. But so I don't know the nature of this easy puzzle, but I'm glad to hear it shouldn't be too challenging. So let's let's start solving. This was uh, this was constructed by Michael Pelios and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. All right. A repo job could be a tow. If your car is repossessed, perhaps it will be towed away. Um, a clump of grass could be a bit of turf, maybe, or a clump of grass. I wouldn't think of a clump of grass as being a turf. So I'm actually not sure this is correct, but let's, maybe it is, nasty, ug, okay. Um, Dungeons and Dragons monster. It must be an ogre, which is a common fairy tale monster. Oh, see, this doesn't look good. Oh, a tuft, a tuft of grass. There we go. It was not, I was correct to be skeptical of turf. Um, and easy there could be, whoa, you might say whoa to a horse or something if it's acting up a bit. I'm not sure. Cause of, ma of a mascara streak, a tear, perhaps a tear running down your, your face could streak your mascara. And a planet to a poet could be an orb, often. You see um, planetary bodies referred to as orbs, poetically. Breakfast cereal with a toucan mascot. 60, toucan mascot, 64, I can't read. A toucan mascot, 69 across. What did I tell you today? Uh, anyway, I don't know what the 69 across with an exclamation point, interestingly, is referring to, but I do suspect this is Fruit Loops spelled with fruit intentionally misspelled to mirror the double O's in loops, I guess to evoke the loops themselves. I never really thought about that before. I guess that's why that's called Fruit Loops. I never had, never ate, was never a Fruit Loop consumer, so I guess I never thought very hard about the name Fruit Loops. Okay, high school hurdle is the SAT, perhaps, the um, standardized achievement test, and blank gel drying agent that comes in small packets, right? Those uh, silica packets that sometimes come to, you know, they're desiccants, they dry things, they keep keep moisture out of things where it's important for that to be true during shipping and so on. Uh, gown go with could be cap, so cap and gown in a, um, I think this probably refers to a graduation, graduation garb. A buffoon is an ass. Okay, and sneaker brand in a Run DMC hit. This is clearly, uh, oops, Adidas 
or Adidas. Uh, some, it's often pronounced. It's pronounced very differently in the in the UK. I've noticed um, sort of how Nike is often pronounced Nike here. Anyway, not true what you say about me. I don't. It's not true. I don't pronounce Adidas that way. Least active is the idlest, perhaps. And Ray of Goodfellas is Ray Liotta, the actor, the lead in the film Goodfellas. Um, something's wrong. Star Wars Cantina patrons, for short. ETs, maybe extraterrestrials? So what is this? Not true what you say about me. I... No. Oh, I do so. Right. Sorry. I was so focused on this being a negative reaction, but it could be a positive reaction. Someone could be saying something negative about you, and you could be saying, no, I do so do that. Okay. Team that broke the curse of the Bambino in 2004. Uh, Boston Red Sox, 69 across, whatever that is, it'll be interesting when we finally get there. Uh, so this is baseball. This is a baseball clue. And the curse of the Bambino. Is the Bambino Babe Ruth, maybe? Is that what that refers to? Um, I know that there's a I know there's a sort of legendary rivalry between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. So I think this is um, that's what this is referring to in some way, I think. Okay, King Midas's vice was greed. King Midas who turned everything to gold. Harry cryptids are yetis, maybe? Cryptids be, uh, being uh, animals that are mythological and you know, often claimed to exist, but there's no evidence to suggest they in fact do. Um, oh, that's strange. I spelled this in a weird <laughs> inverted manner. That was bizarre. Upscale hotel amenities. An, uh, an upscale hotel might have a nice gym, maybe. And to gather could be to reap, perhaps, to as in crops. Mediterranean eruptor would be the volcano, Mount Etna. And tropical Flavor mango would be maybe the flavor associated with tropical areas and big name in shape shapewear. This is the um, the brand Spanx. I would think. I think this is. I've seen this in the puzzle maybe one time before. I'd be curious to know if this is a if this is a debut or if it's been in the puzzle before. I think it has been maybe once or twice. Hold sway is to reign. Maybe you hold sway over um, your area of control. You reign over it. A uh, place for a pit stop is a rest area, maybe. Turn off of a highway, perhaps, a rest at that kind of thing. And Aurora's Greek counterpart, so Eos. Uh, the rosy-fingered dawn, that came up in... Oh, that came up in an acrostic, I think, maybe, that I solved for the Patreon campaign recently. Was it that or was it something else? I can't remember. It might have been the regular crossword. With 35 down, savings plan option. Oh, a Roth IRA. This is something that the New York Times crossword loves IRAs, which is, makes sense because it's a short, useful collection of fairly common letters. So a Roth IRA is a type of personal investment um, instrument that is available in the United States for retirement purposes. Okay, like a half moon tide, a neap tide, sort of... Um, in it's not. It's neither low tide nor high tide, and I'm sure there's a more specific definition than that. But uh, yes, neap tide, one of the tides, and uh, it's sort of in between low and high. I mean, uh, didn't move is sat tight, maybe. Sign of spring. Gee whiz, and it has caused a lot of problems in this world, but it has not solved one yet. Per Maya Angelou, hate perhaps. Axe is hue, maybe? If you can imagine chopping a tree, hewing. Is that what this is? Buffalo Soldier, Dreadlock, uh, Rasta, Bob Marley. Looks right to me. And sign of, oh, thaw is a sign of spring. There we go. The spring thaw. There we go. Of the ice and snow, and what have you. Gee whiz. Oh, gosh. I see. This looks like Pharaoh. Ah, Triple Crown winner of 2015. 69 across again. Are these all pointing to 69 across? That's our revealer. Yes, that's our revealer, clearly. So I, I think, strangely, I, re I would have heard this name on the news, but I just cannot remember what it is. This would be the name of a horse. 
um, but I couldn't tell you what it is right now. NBC hit since 1975 in brief, in brief would be surely SNL, Saturday Night Live. Um, I wonder if 1975 is when the show began or when it changed its name, because I do know for the first year of its existence, it was called simply Saturday Night. And I wonder how technical this clue is being in that regard. I suppose even if this was when the show began under a different name, you could still say the show itself, the entity, which we currently call SNL, has been a hit since that year. So that's fair enough. A group that often elects officers in September. I'm guessing this is PTA, Parent Teacher Association, which um, I suppose it makes sense that they would elect officers in September because that's when uh, most school uh, school years begin in the United States. A site for, sto for sore eyes, question mark. Optician? In other words, you see an optician. It's a site. You see an optician when your eyes are sore, I guess. If we treat this in a literal punny sort of way, thanks to the question mark, the question mark, of course, being the indicator of some kind of pun or wordplay. So that's what's going on there. Reward for giving a paw. You might give a dog a treat if you say shake and it, and it uh, offers its paw. Then you'd give it a treat for being a good dog. And others for short, uh, etc. You could have a list and just continue it by saying etc. Humorist Bombeck, Irma Bombeck. Come up, come up a, several times in the puzzle. I have to admit, this is one of those names I think I have heard, I've certainly heard in the world on occasion, but is the, the reason this name is more firmly launched in my brain, I would admit, is because it has come up, she has come up in the crossword a few times. Uh, some genes are Lee's genes, maybe? Does that fit here? Reef Dweller. Oh, whoops, I spelled Irma, Irma wrong. Sorry about that. Good thing I checked the Reef Dweller, the eel. Okay, oh, maybe I have all of this wrong. Maybe Irma isn't wrong, or isn't correct. Uh, triple Crown Winner. Oh, and others for short. I don't know. That was strange that I put ETCS in there. Sorry, you must have been really wondering what I was doing there. Et ceteras I put in there for some reason, which isn't it's an odd thing to put at all, which can be <laughs> this is often used in a similar way to et cetera, but actually fits the proper number of letters for this for this answer. So that was very weird. Uh, oh, so American Pharaoh. Well, I was putting in all kinds of strange things here. That was very weird. Uh, anyway, so this is Irma after all. And then verb with thou, thou art. Um, it's collection, it's sort of a couplet of words, I guess you hear often in biblical writing and that sort of thing. Uh, time for parting shots is last call. So here we have another question mark indicating punnery or wordplay. And this is referring to if you're ordering a shot at a bar, for instance, it's last call. So it's your final, it's your, part, the, your parting shot, the shot you'll take before you depart the bar. And Fast Lewis, Carl Lewis, and Fury is Ire. Carl Lewis was an Olympian, right? And then Supermodel Weck. I've seen this in the crossword as well. Alex, maybe. Um, video game franchise featuring Sub-Zero and Sonya Blade. Is that Street? No, it's not Street Fighter. It's Mortal Kombat, the other fighting one. So Mortal Kombat, which I was never, never more than glancingly familiar with the fighting video games because anytime, for instance, when I was a, when I was young and I'd go to an arcade with my friends or something and I would try to play the fighting games, I just was never anything other than miserably hopeless at them. Anyway, I think that's I think that is the uh I think that's the answer. Okay, clear now is C. You see, do you get it? And said cheese say is smiled. And field where Jackie Robinson played. Um, I'm not sure. Carpe diem for one, a motto. You might adopt the motto carpe diem sees the day. Sign in a radio booth on air. You see that so often film and television depicting radio record. I mean, I'm sure it's 
I'm sure it's accurate, but that is where I think most of us have seen it, uh, the on-air sign. Rummage through is rifle through. And we learned recently, where, where was this? It was in it was in something on this channel, the difference between rifle and riffle. So um, rifling has more of a connotation, as this clue says, of rummaging. So yours is a bit more frantic and riffling is specifically sort of browsing through pages. Word with green or pearl, green onions and pearl onions, two kinds of onions. Uh, one term president looks like Taft, President Taft. And Blank adorbs, totes adorbs, I think, is sort of, I don't know, I guess kind of mid-2000s cutesy language. This feels like it has faded slightly somewhat since then, uh, this, this general tone of speech. Mahjong piece would be a tile, a mahjong tile in the game, and a lot of these tend to go to waste ores. So does that mean sort of slag, like the waste from smelting ore. And then uh, I think we've seen all of it. Okay. Traffic was terrible, maybe. A lie, an excuse if you're late, I suppose. If you're leaving, for, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's not a lie. Maybe it's just a fib. It's not It's not a grievous falsehood. It's just a little bit of a fib. So anyway, if you're, the reason I changed that is because leaving for looks like off to. I'm leaving for work, but boy, the traffic was terrible. Uh, pour some sugar on me, rockers. 69 across. Oh, um, hmm. I mean, this is one of the, I can hear this song in my head, but I, uh, I don't really know who, who is responsible for it. Um, maybe I'll recognize it when I get more crosses. Largish, largish jazz combos. Um, octets maybe? Just trying to think of a, <laughs> of a word that would fit there in terms of the number of letters. So an eight piece that would be largish, largish for a jazz combo. I think that's an accurate phrase because jazz combos certainly, on average, can be much bigger than your average rock band, for say, per se. But also, a common jazz combo would be a trio or a quartet. So, an octet is still largish, even if it's not huge and therefore very unusual. So, I think that's a very well judged clue. Uh, business index with the the Dow, the Dow Jones. Uh, Industrial average, I suppose, which is a kind of very strangely constructed stock index. Uh, like the smell of fresh pine is woodsy, maybe? I was going to say woody, but woodsy, I think, makes more sense because it's not that it's woody as in it's like wood. It's that it is like the woods, forest. And a prefix with friendly, eco-friendly is a, is a is a example of a prefix to friendly. Um, field where Jackie Robinson played. Okay, this isn't, I just don't think this is something I'm familiar with personally. So Ebbets Field, I suppose it is. Oh, Gangnam Style rapper was Psy from that Phenomenon song, Gangnam Style, from probably a decade ago at this point. Oof. And Pour Some Sugar on Me, Rockers. It looks like Def Leppard. It's a band of, certainly broadly aware of, but never... Uh, was never deeply familiar with Def Leppard, so that, I guess that explains that. Like some water could be tap water, straight water straight from the tap. Track units are laps around a track, so running around a track, for instance. Trois is to French as uh, Dre is to German. Eins, zwei, Dre. Is that one, two, three in German? I think so. Designer Gucci, Aldo Gucci who was depicted in the film House of Gucci, which I did see, which helped me get this. Although I think with these letters, it would have been, as an Italian name, it would have been kind of a gimme. So that's fine. Uh, like many of Horace's works, Horace, the poet known for his odes, the New York Times crossword, also known for its answers that are ode or odes, and National uh, Gallery, oh, right, no, okay, I was going to say, it's not odes, it's good that I looked at this. National Gallery architect, would be surely I M Pei, the great, uh, I think now late architect, um, and so many of her, her. So yes, actually, odes would have been a poor answer to this clue because it says like many of her, Horace's work, so works. So if it said simply said many of Horace's works, odes would have been a good answer. But because it said like many of Horace's works, we're describing 
the works themselves. So they are odic. We're describing them rather than uh, listing sort of their category. So then here we have not my typo, which is sick SIC, which is what you put uh, when you're quoting something that has an error already in it in the original and you're indicating this error is included intentionally because it's part of the original source material. And there we have it. Um, I think I broadly agree with the assessment in the Daily Solve Discord chat server that this was a fairly easy and straightforward Wednesday, which was fine with me uh, this, this today, I have to say. Uh, so great. And let's see. So uh, we never looked at, we never, f right. Yes, I see. <laughs> so the theme, and I, I actually commented on it in a way in my very original description of the term fruit, the, the brand name Fruit Loops. I completely forgot that Sick was our revealer. It's actually not really, can, it's not really presented as a revealer, even though it can be found as predicted by Lyle's law in a fairly revealer friendly position. So uh, viewer Lyle of this channel um, postulated once quite a while ago at this point that the revealer tends to be located in the across answers towards the end of the puzzle. And the revealer, of course, is the answer that, that ties together the whole theme. And so I suppose you could argue this does that, but what it doesn't do, which many revealers do, is actually explain the theme. This is just an answer that's been referred to by the rest of our theme answers. And the relevance is that it is this not my typo, sick uh, little quotation indicator. And all of these answers um, have intentional typos, intentional misspellings. So Def Leopard, this is well, this is two misspellings, I suppose. I I guess I never really... So leopard is obviously a misspelling of the big cat, the leopard. Um, it never really occurred to me, I suppose, to, to wonder whether the deaf bit is a misspelling or if that's a, a reference to sort of definitely, as in the phrase most deaf. But I guess it probably is a misspelling of deaf as in uh, the inability to hear. Um, Mortal Kombat um, is obviously a misspelling of combat with um, the, with a C right here. That's, that's very straightforward. Um, American Pharaoh, this is a funny misspelling of Pharaoh where the O precedes the A rather than the other way around. I don't know if that's intentional or if that is a misspelling on the part of the horse's owner. I can't really, because most of these you can sort of see Mortal Kombat I mean, so Def Leppard is just, is dramatically misspelled, right? I mean, this is so far from the correct spelling of D-E-A-F-L-E-O that, it, that it's just, it's, it's, it's beyond doubt that it's intentional. Combat, the K, gives the word a bit of sort of aggressiveness that a C doesn't have, so that feels intentional. Um, Boston Red Sox, um, I think Sox is an old-timey spelling of Sox as, as in what you wear on your feet, Um that I know has a historical, you know, there's a historical sort of reason that's the way it is. And then Fruit Loops, like I said, the misspelling is, I, I believe, alluding to the, the circular shape of the individual pieces of cereal. American Pharaoh, I can't think of any good reason. <laughs> I can't think of any sort of interesting or punny reason why this would be misspelled. If there is such a reason, it's probably specific to horse racing or the particular circumstances of this horse or its owner that I, I simply don't know. But to me, it just looks like a misspelling that's been, <laughs> that is the way it is because the owner can call their horse whatever they want. Um, so I don't know. If you know the answer to why American Pharaoh is misspelled, let me know. Um, but that's interesting. I wouldn't even have thought to comment on that without the sick. I think because maybe I already had, I think I already had these crosses, so I wasn't really looking at it as um, a kind of, I wasn't thinking about it as a word that needed to be spelled, but anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, what a funny, what a funny theme. So yes, it's intentionally misspelled uh, proper nouns, I guess, is the theme. Because the, because of course you couldn't have intentionally misspelled regular nouns because then they wouldn't be misspelled. That would just be what the noun is. <laughs> so these are misspelled because they are incorporating sort of ordinary nouns into the names. 
Okay, and that's that. That's the puzzle for Wednesday. So let's let's move on now to a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I think there were there were, there were um, several interesting comments. I think uh, only a couple of things that actually dealt with uh, corrections or explanations of my own comments. So let's let's deal with those quickly. Rick Fisher explains, Romper Room was a TV show for young children in the late 1960s to 1970s. The host would call out the names of kids while looking in a magic mirror like she could see them watching at the end of the show. Never my name. <laughs> Sorry about that, Rick. And Laura Sexton points out that it was uh, sort of franchised, so local TV stations would have their own female hostess who would implement the magic mirror, uh, and the daily lessons were provided for local stations to use. So there were versions of this regionally in not just different parts of the United States, but different countries as well, it looks like, from, from my brief research. Uh, Laura adds, it started in 1953 and continued in one form or another until 1994, so it's possible more than one generation in a family could remember it fondly. And uh, I did further look up I just looked up the phrase romper room, and I think it it more generically refers to a place for children to play. So that would be, um, that would probably be the, the meaning I would assume was being referred to in the puzzle yesterday, the generic term, and also obviously the source of the, the name for the television program. But it also, I suspect, is the case that the generic phrase romper room doesn't seem to be widely used as much in modern language. So it makes sense that most people, there would be a disproportionate number of people who would know it primarily through the, uh, the television program. Okay. And Craig Jones pointed out that IROC, I-R-O-C, which was clued yesterday, I think as classic Camaro model, the, the, the actual car, uh, stands for International Race of Champions. Thank you for that. I was not familiar with the International Race of Champions, which appears to be um, an auto racing competition that was founded in the 70s and folded at some point in the mid-2000s. So it, it, it no longer exists as far as I'm aware. And that's that. I think it was just those two in terms of, of corrections for me. And that means that's that for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle where we should have something trickier and part of that difficulty will likely come with a more involved or intricate theme, which I do always enjoy, I have to admit. So I hope you'll come back for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh -huh.